Duality itself is evil. The existence of duality itself is evil. Specifically, duality in the context of the duality of good and evil, or rather, quote, unquote, good and quote, unquote, evil. No, the entire thing is evil. And I will demonstrate and prove this to you very swiftly and very easily in this presentation. So, first of all, this is a video in response to so many individuals that I've encountered in life, in person and online, who keep going on about, oh, I believe reality is dual. It's neither good nor evil. It's just this eternal back and forth between them. Sort of like a pseudo-Zoroastrian perspective, right? I say pseudo-Zoroastrian as in, it's a perspective a lot of people have that either involves theistic views of the thing or non-theistic views of it. The point is, they have this viewpoint that involves, oh, I think reality is just this back and forth thing forever. This eternal clash or this eternal quote-unquote balance or whatever the fuck term they want to use to refer to that horror, okay? But they fail to understand, and they can't seem to grasp through their thick skulls, that the existence of a clash between good and evil in and of itself is an evil thing. Let's go and zoom in on some real-world examples that have happened recently within or near our own lifetimes. So, World War II, for example. The war itself happening in the first place, taking place, going on, was evil. Never mind what the intentions of the individuals were involved in it, what they were attempting to achieve or do or accomplish, people killing other people is evil in action, regardless of what the intention is. The existence of a situation where people are going to have to kill others in the first place is evil. The existence of the situation in and of itself is evil. So if you just extend that to the cosmic level of things, okay, and you just have a broader perspective of things beyond just a little tunnel visioned perspective of things, you can see, wait a minute. So just like war itself existing in obvious in front of our faced form where physical horrors are going on, Heads getting blown off, people screaming in terror and agony. Far worse than is ever displayed or displayable in Hollywood, mind you. Since that exists and goes on, and we know that the existence of that thing happening and occurring is evil, therefore, on the cosmic level, on the larger scale, the clash or the war between good and evil is evil itself. In other words, the fact that it has to take place to begin with, the fact that it has to happen, the fact that it is a necessity is evil. The fact that we as beings who want pleasure for all beings to the maximum have to oppose sentiences, wills, desires that clash with those desires in us, that being the case to begin with is evil. So, Next time someone tries to spout off this bullshit to you, oh no, reality is just this duality thing. Hold on a minute. Be like, wait. Duality is evil. Here's your evidence. Here's your proof. Boom. There it is. So they can't get off the hook with this bullshit. Oh no, there's some uh, bullshit. The, the reality is the thing, the situation itself being that way is evil as fuck. So it's obvious. It's very clear that we're dealing with a situation where the potential of torture of sentiences is an eternally existing thing. Okay. Even if somehow in every aspect of reality, somehow we pull off eliminating the manifestation of torture to sentiences everywhere in all time and space. Okay. Going forward. If we somehow achieve that, which would be fucking amazing if we could achieve that, even then, the potential for the torture of sentiences still remains. And we have to forever maintain against that potential from ever manifesting in terms of a new occurrence of torture, you see? 
So the very fact we have to fucking do that in the first motherfucking place, the fact that at least one sentience on a cosmic level or beyond has to do that, at least one, if not multiple, that itself is motherfucking evil. It's profoundly immoral and wicked that that is the case, okay? And it is also terrible and bad, etc., for the idiots who are hyper-fixated on denying natural evil, right? No, 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 you have to use a different term. It's That's not evil. You have to use terms like terrible and horrible and awful, but you can't use the term evil. So for those idiots out there, okay, take use a different term. Horrific, torturous, unimaginably terrible, etc. Okay? You want to be a definition or term Nazi over my use of the term evil in the broader sense, beyond just the tunnel vision definition. So, <clears throat> is it clear enough to you now? Does it make sense to people now? Why I say this? And why I repeat this so often. Because it's a very common occurrence, a very frequent occurrence. Where people always keep trying to bring back the note reality is this duality thing. Reality is full of the back and forth between good and evil. And they, they don't understand that that back and forth itself is evil. The fact that it has to happen. The fact that, it, it, the fact that good is forced to have to deal with evil in the first fucking place is evil. Okay. Just like a child being forced to have to survive in the middle of nowhere without help is motherfucking evil, okay? The situation is evil, all right? <clears throat> because that situation was imposed on that sentience against its will. That is the profoundly immoral and wicked part, okay? So whatever other sentience imposed that experience on that sentience is the source of that evil situation. And it's an evil situation because it was imposed by another motherfucking sentience onto them. That's why. Okay? So why do people do that? Why do they try to act like or engage in this cope of... There's this forever back and forth between good and evil. That's the nature of reality. Or there's this eternal balance. There's this quote unquote balance of horrors all over the place, as well as good things all over the place. Even though anybody with half a brain can recognize that the evils far vastly to insane degrees outweigh any amount of what we would classify as good at all times, in all places, everywhere. Why well, that part they, they can't recognize or see clearly. Okay. But even if that wasn't the case, even if it was actually more quote-unquote balanced, well, you're still in a world where certain individuals are being tortured and other individuals aren't. That's evil. That situation is an evil situation. So, the reason people engage in this copium of... It's, it's also connected to people just getting into this apathetic just-accept just accept psychology, right? Just accept that there's always going to be this back and forth between good and evil, and that's just the way it's going to be forever. The problem is it's a just accept psychology. It's some variation of that, right? You should never just accept. You should always be giving the middle finger to the fact that reality is that. The fact that reality is this nightmare hellscape, you should always forever be giving a middle finger to that a stuck up long thick erect penis to that you should you should be rebelling against that forever forever for your entire existence you should rebel against reality being this dual bullshit thing or this evil thing whatever you, you should rebel against the shitty situation that is reality itself period you should be a rebel against reality and immerse in a sacred delusion and perpetuate the glitches within reality for your own pleasure and the pleasure of those close to you you should never just accept it, ever. Just accepting it is what slaves do. Never just accept the fact that reality is a shit show 
on all levels and all tiers, even beyond this realm. It's a shit show because there is the potential for these things existing. That's why it's a shit show. Even if the things don't manifest, it's a shit show because the potential is always there forever of the shit from happening again. The potential is always there. And that itself is motherfucking shitty. Okay. So before people fill my comment section with these jokes about, but you love shit and blah, 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 and all this other type of stuff. If you can do the good, if you can do the joke in good taste, then cool. If you are going to make a stupid ass variation of that joke in relationship to this, trying to be clever, trying to mask your asinine assholery towards me, it's not going to work anymore. And it never worked before. I just had a unnecessary no ban policy. Now I've got an insta ban policy. So if I'm annoyed by your comment, I'll just delete it instantly. You can still contact me individually separately if you want outside of YouTube, outside of public comment sections. If you really want to talk to me, so I'm not going to treat you poorly. It's just other people aren't going to see your stupidity if it shows up. So that's all. So basically the point of this video is to really just squash and really end this bullshit in any variation of it. So whatever the variation is, whether it's Zoroastrianism or pseudo Zoroastrianism or any variation of, I believe that reality is this eternal back and forth thing of benevolent things over here and malevolent things over here, things worthy over here and things were, and therefore reality isn't for that reason, all bad. It's that holds like, okay. That just really demonstrates a very limited, not very deep grasp on what the situation actually is. It shows an inability to recognize the problem of duality being there to begin with in the first fucking place, having the potential to manifest in the first fucking place, their inability to recognize that that is the problem itself. The, it shows that they're only recognizing problems as being clear and obvious torture that's easily observable to the naked eye or mental emotional torture that's easily recognizable to the layman as what is what they they're classifying as what's fit to be opposed what needs to be opposed right they're not recognizing all the other different micro layers of it though so once again it's just simply a lack of deep enough insight a lack of deep enough thought, a lack of deep enough feeling on the subject matter is what it is. And of course, all the narratives about, well, there's the transcendence beyond the duality. That's the point. Okay. People to try to pull that and bring that up have obviously missed exactly what I've been talking about this entire time. If there is a transcendence beyond duality the very fact that there is the possibility of a duality also being experienceable instead of or in spite of that transcendence being beyond it is motherfucking evil. Okay? And it's classified as transcendence because that's distinguishing it from what? What is imminent? What is here and now in front of our faces, shoved in our faces against our will? The transcendence it's called transcendent because it's transcended. It's above. It's beyond past what is shoved in your face here. But the fact remains that it's classified as transcendent because there is something else being shoved in your face here. You see? Otherwise, that would just be only the reality. That's it, period. There would be no, that is the transcendence and this is the imminence. That would be both the transcendence and the imminence only. And there would be no possibility of torture or pain or torment. You see? I'm very fucking familiar with all these occult concepts and philosophical concepts and dogmas, doctrines, ideas, all this type of stuff. Almost all of them fall short in terms of recognizing this. And that is their fatal flaw. Quite literally, in many cases, quite literally fatal to people to not recognize this in many cases. I'm not just saying fatal flaw as in a 
allegorical sense or a you know metaphorical sense quite literally that can fatally that can kill people if they don't recognize this okay sooner than they otherwise would pass and it has i've seen it happen so then people would bring up well isn't it useful for them to maintain some sense of hope I suggest people deeply look into my various videos on the pleasure goddess and what I've also described here in terms of what actively should be engaged in. There's tons of hope, or rather, even beyond hope, even if you don't have hope, there's a realm, there's a state of consciousness, there's a place of assurance of what is certain within specific parameters, okay? You don't need hope, actually. You just need assurance of specific things within specific parameters. For example, you need to be able to clearly identify what pleasure is, where the value in pleasure is to you and those close to you, and the active mechanism to continually maintain that pleasure purposefully, intentionally, actively. And when you hone in on those mechanisms to maintain pleasure and the value they're in. That is how you actually ensure that you do not fall into unnecessary depressions or hopelessness or terror or agony or all these other things. Minus yourself physically being in those situations, obviously. But for the most part, you're going to be able to bypass that because You're going to be able to see things within clear parameters in terms of what's actually happening. And you're going to hone in on what you actually can be involved in guaranteeing to the maximum as much as possible. Okay. And then people go on and say, well, there's no guarantees in life. Correct. That is also what's evil about reality. So falling into a depression and going, oh my God, I'm losing hope. It's not going to do you any useful functional good. It's just going to cause you more problems. So shake that bullshit off and focus. Focus on what you know for a certainty is pleasurable to you and fixate on maintaining that as focus. Okay? As your focus. Instead of focusing on the bullshit that is the rest of reality which is just a bunch of crap thrown in your face against your will. Okay? Focus on whatever it is you absolutely motherfucking can have a sense of control over and a sense of guaranteed pleasure from. And I could give you many examples, but the examples of this should be quite obvious to you already. If you've been focusing and paying attention in your own life, to your thoughts and your feelings and how to healthfully go about those things. In fact, if anything would depress me, and I'm very resistant to depression, if anything were to depress me, it would be the awareness that a sentience is going to be forever oblivious to the actual horror that is the rest of reality outside of their little containment bubble and thus be exposed to the rest of the horror that is outside their bubble of containment. That would depress me if it was the situation for any sentience within this hellscape. It doesn't depress me in relationship to the pleasure goddess herself, because, of course, the entity who is directly pleasure is only capable of experiencing that and thinking about that, obviously. So that obliviousness is not a source of depression. That's quite uplifting and inspirational and a relief. But other sentiences that are not specifically directly the pleasure goddess, who are entities experiencing sentience here in this world with me, It would depress me if they themselves entered into a state of obliviousness while here, or let's say excessive obliviousness to the nature of the rest of reality outside of their pleasure bubble. Okay. 
because it would depress me because they would be exposed more so to torture and torment due to being oblivious to the outside hellscape that is the rest of reality. That's why, because they would slack on their maintenance against the horrors. That's why. Okay. Amidst their enjoyments. But in this world, quite the opposite seems to depress people. What relaxes me and calms me down in terms of vivid awareness of the actual nature of reality on all tiers and depths, the hellscape that we're in now and beyond this realm, what we're actually dealing with here, all the little micro horrors that are going on every day, being aware of those things and knowing that they're going on actually calms me down because, not because they're happening, them happening is horrible, but knowing about the actual nature of reality and how horrible it actually is and what that entails calms me down because I know the parameters that I'm working with and that I'm dealing with. Okay. So therefore I, I remain aware that I need to actively maintain against potentiality running loose, running amok and just things taking place and going on, which tends to lead to torture eventually, if not directly. And I can actively maintain structure, order, control, guarantees, assurances of the things that I get pleasure from and that pleasure those that are close to me that I care about. Okay? I can guarantee those things within the reality of situational, simultaneous determinism. So if you don't understand how Determinism actually works yet. Watch that video. I explain it very specifically and very clearly. No, we don't have free will. We're dealing with a reality that is simultaneously determined eternally. Yes, it is hard determined, but as the puppets are moving at, at the gesture and the movements of the hands of the puppet master, the puppet master is also being moved by the puppets in the very course of it moving the puppets, etc. Okay? So if it seems a little foggy, just watch that video. Simultaneous determinism. And it will all make much clearer sense to you. Because there's a stupid, unnecessary circle jerk back and forth. People keep going back and forth. Well, hard determinism is proven and confirmed, but why do we have this delusional sense of free will? Don't we have any say in anything ever? Well, simultaneous determinism. Understand it. Learn it. Grasp it. Be able to process how it works and how it actually operates. Understand how you are, yes, actively involved in what is going on in terms of what's happening with the rest of reality. You're not only a puppet. You are a puppet also as one aspect of what you are, yes. But you're not only a puppet. You're actively causing reality to move also. So you are a factor in what is taking place without there being free will. So in other words, you're recognizing your active participation in hard deterministic reality. And that's what you're mistaking as being your free will or your limited will, etc. However you see it. It's a recognition of your active participation in deterministic reality is what it is. But very few people have the ability to articulate it because they don't think enough about it, obsessively enough, to almost crazed degrees. I say almost crazed because you can think about it to obsessive degrees without going crazy about it. But it seems like the brains of humans in this world, most of the time, uh, they start to get headaches and they have problems if they think too much about a particular subject matter such as this which is not an issue I actually have regarding these kind of subject matters because they're not actually that complicated to grasp. It's just people are thinking about them in the wrong way versus in the correct way. So in other words, they're making assumptions and thinking based on assumptions rather than understanding what's actually happening and understanding things based on un actually understanding them. They're just like, they're running on an assumption. Okay. I assume this about the thing. Therefore let's roll with it. Okay. So they're assuming something wrong about hard determinism, and they're assuming something wrong about free will also, both. Unnecessary assumptions. So with that tangent narrative being talked about a bit, let's loop back around to the start of this video, the duality issue being 
the proof and the verification that reality is evil. The very fact, or one of the many verifications and many proofs, rather. There's many others. But if if a person is too dumbass to recognize that the existence of a clash or of a back and forth of a war is in and of itself evil in the first fucking place, the situation occurring to begin with is evil. If they can't recognize that, then well, then they're just dumber than a box of fucking rocks. I guarantee you all the people who were experiencing World War II and hell, every other war throughout history, every other raid, every other attack where they were forced to defend themselves and fight for their lives every one of them would have recognized that them having to do that was evil as fuck as their relatives were being sliced to pieces and ripped open next to them. You see what I'm saying? If they were directly experienced, they would recognize that the war itself is the problem. And people who have PTSD have actually been in war recognize this also. They're like, the situation itself is the fucking horror. This is the same issue that the people who experienced lifelong trauma and issues from the horrors they experienced in Vietnam are going through. It's the same issue. It's they're recognizing that the horror is the existence of the war to fucking begin with. The situation to begin with is the problem. Okay. That's the horror. And they were forced to participate in something against their will that traumatized them and traumatized others. And they were forced against their will to tear up the bodies of others and do horrific things against their will. And they recognize the horror that is actual reality. And they suspect more than likely whether they're able to articulate it or not, that reality beyond this realm is also like that, because how could a, more good reality lead to this horrible of a fucking thing? The answer is it couldn't. So obviously the reality outside of this is more dark and horrific. Well, I don't like to use the word dark anymore, returning to these concepts, um, and I'll explain that in a future video, but is more terrible than even this reality is. Even if the states beyond it are, many of them, paradise states, states of obliviousness tuned out from the rest of the horrors of reality, That's its own horror because while those states are existing, once again, you have this state going on right now as those states are going on. So you have the extreme, severe unbalance and unfairness of paradise states while the rest of us are rotting away here being tormented, you see, and many being actually physically tortured. That's the issue. It's the unbalance factor as part of the fucking evil, you see where only certain sentiences are in paradise and the rest of them are just being ripped to pieces elsewhere. In terms of experience, and then people go on the spiel again, it's it's amazing how many times, no matter how many times I talk about these things in a video, people keep bringing up the same things again later as if it was not already discussed and refuted many times over by myself and others, right? They start bringing up, the, they loop back around again to the, um, the, the whole dynamic of, oh, but, you know, those beings in that realm are in a good state. They deserve it, this or that, whatever the narrative is, right? So there is the possibility to be in that state and experience that. So that's good, right? Yes, for you directly. If you're the sentient experiencing that, I'm pleasured there, that for you is good, yes. But why is it that you're the one able to experience paradise and all that type of stuff. And the rest of everybody else is just being ripped to pieces, including those who are very loving, kind hearted and affectionate in nature when they should be in paradise with you, but they're not like that's fucked up as hell in so many insane ways. There's just so many layers of fucked up about that. You could have one entity in paradise in connection to their lovey-dovey, affectionate thoughts, kind thoughts, but you have another entity who has the same type of thoughts and feelings as that that entity, but who's trapped against their will in this hellscape, being tortured to death in terms of experience. And then people go on about this whole, oh, well, this world is just illusory. It's just temporary. It being illusory or temporary in technical status makes no motherfucking difference because the experiences of torture are still fucking going on. So it's irrelevant whether it's technically illusory or technically temporary. It's all sorts of batshit irrelevant, okay? And this is this irrelevant. It's amazing. That's the part people always keep bringing up. But it's but there's a real world beyond this one, and this is just the illusory world. You're mistaking. No, I'm not mistaking anything. I'm aware of the narrative of this is an illusory world. The point is, it's irrelevant, and I'm aware 
of what about that is irrelevant. But these idiots can't understand that. They can't understand. They think, oh, because the technical status of this world is this temporary illusory place, and eventually we're all going to get back to this paradise state beyond this, or so they claim. Even if that's the fucking case, well, the very fact that this experience is able to happen ever, whether it's temporary or not, is what's evil about reality, including the reality and the transcendence beyond it. So transcendence is evil also for that reason, because it allows the potentiality of things other than transcendence to be experienced sensationally with a nervous system, etc. Never mind whether it's actually the deeper reality or not, that's irrelevant. Because the fact is you can still feel torture, okay? You can still feel it as an experience, even if you... And even though you have an identity beyond this hellscape, okay? That is the problem. It's that it's experienceable. It's able to be experienced is the evil, is the issue. Okay? And this is how you can expose cults is they never, ever, ever hone in on these points to this degree. They always bypass it. They skip it over. They gloss it over. And they dodge this fucking point. Ineffectively, I might add. And so this is how you end up coming in contact with someone like me and probably why you like this channel so much. One of many reasons is because I'm one of the only motherfuckers in the world talking about this specifically, calling out all these bullshit points that people bring up and try to dodge and not acknowledge, etc. And you're like, holy shit, finally. And guess what? Yes, sure enough. You find yourself most of the time interpersonally when it comes to these topics isolated in person. Okay. Therefore, here we are, wherever we are in the world, all throughout the world, connecting with each other, talking to each other, having sane conversations or what we deem sane rather, or what we deem reasonable or what we relish as being insane in our own ways or crazy and relishing that the point is they're conversations we have fun discussing, right? But we notice that in person, other people tend to get weirded out to excessive degrees or they experience misery when we bring up these topics and we're like, why are they, why are they experiencing misery when these topics are brought up, especially when they ask us about it, right? You know, why not just have a consciousness of, Hey, this is actually really cool that you're actually aware of what's actually fucking going on with reality, right? This and the layers beyond it. Cool. That's useful information to have and to know. Thanks. Instead of that, it's more just like, what the fuck? And then once again, it's all those other bullshit narratives we talked about. I believe reality is this duel is back and forth, this balance. All right, hold on, motherfucker. Wait. Let me show to you how to think and feel deeper about the subject matter. And then they get all turned off by it as no, 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 because they can't fucking handle it. That's why. So it's not my job to make somebody able to handle reality. It's my job to explain actual reality as it is, as it's obviously clearly observable and intuitively inferable, right? People, people are just, they love these fucking big words and shit, right? Imminence, transcendence. It's like, I can use all these big motherfucking words all day in all sorts of contexts. I can talk people's ear off with these deep philosophical concepts and terms and all this other shit. But it really should just be explained in more layman terms and more basic ass fucking terms. That's why I just prefer to keep it simple without having to go into all these elaborations. But it's necessary, it seems, because people seem to bullshit themselves with these mazes they create in their heads of definition, terms, word jugglery, word salad to try and justify some concept or idea. But it's just like, okay, motherfucker, reality is fucking evil. And if you see it for what it is, you just fucking see it, period. You can just fucking observe that. It's not difficult to observe. And if you need me to go on an hour long spiel about explaining to you the verifications of how that is and how I know this to be true and how this is clearly evidentially observable, very easily, well, I can do that too. But it's just a lot simpler if you can just see it for yourself and me not need to explain it to you because of how fucking obvious it is. 
but people like their word salad. They like their philosophy. They like their esoteric terms. They like their, you know, big terms. They like their big, you know, names and all this other shit. So it's like, all right, I can have fun doing that all day and night with you. I can do the guru thing all day and night. And I can expose where in a person's thinking they've stopped short. Specifically, in terms of insight, in terms of thought and feeling, both. And I can pinpoint it. All right, here's where you're stopping short. Boom. Not going far enough in thinking, feeling, or thought. And with that, I hope now, beyond any shadow of a doubt, you clearly understand that duality itself is evil. The very fact we have a world where anything other than only pleasure exists at all, even as a potential, is evil. And that you understand that... And that you understand the fact of how these things operate and work and why. (sighs) I hope that with this understanding, you'll be able to go forward in life more enthusiastic, less depressed, and more precise in terms of your being honed in on what is worth pursuing and maintaining and fixating on. Because as a final note, in my upcoming video, where I'm going to hone in on this much more, the final note is that the problem with this world that people have psychologically most of the time is that they do not appreciate the extreme motherfucking importance of maintaining and perpetuating pleasure. It just isn't clicking to them why that is so insanely fucking important. The degree of importance of that doesn't really register to most brains most of the time. That is the main problem and the main flaw in human psychology in this world. They don't understand the extreme urgency and the extreme essentialness of that psychology. They downplay pleasure. They brush it aside. They insignificantize it. And they do so only to their detriment and the detriment of those close to them because they shoot themselves in the foot and invite more horrors, torments, and problems into their life unnecessarily by thinking that way, especially into their thoughts. Okay. Lack of appreciation of the essential urgency of fixation and obsession on perpetuation of pleasure is the capital T H E problem within the psychology, the brains of most humans, most of the time, every motherfucking where. And with that, I will talk to you soon. Have a good one. PP signing out and plunging in. Talk to you later.